Hey there, welcome over here to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you some quick and easy dump and go slow cooker recipes. I know a lot of people just like to use their slow cooker in the winter and fall, but actually slow cooking is one of the most popular ways to cook in the summertime just because you are definitely able to beat the heat. So I hope you enjoy all of these delicious recipes today. Let's head to my kitchen and start cooking. We're getting started out today by making this Fiesta chicken and it is perfect as burritos or tacos or you can make it into nachos like I did it. So to my slow cooker, I added two large chicken breasts. You'll sprinkle two tablespoons of your favorite type of taco seasoning on top of the chicken. For the corn, I'm using one can of sweet corn and my corn is undrained. Now you'll be adding a can of Rotel and then you'll be adding one can of beans. So you could really use any type Type of beans you like but I chose to use one can of cannellini beans and they were drained and rinsed. The very last thing you'll do is add eight ounces of cream cheese on top. Cook this on low for about six hours. After six hours of cooking you're going you are going to shred up your chicken. I'm just shredding it with my meat masher right here. I absolutely love this meat masher. Since I was wanting to make this fiesta chicken into nachos on my plate right here, I have quite a bit of tortilla chips. I sprinkled cheddar jack cheese on top and then placed our fiesta chicken on that. You could add any type of toppings you like, but I just used what I had on hand. Iceberg lettuce, cherry tomatoes, lime, sour cream, and guacamole. This Fiesta Chicken is 10 out of 10, so, so good. My entire family loves it. Like I said previously, you can make this into tacos, burritos, or kind of just eat it how it is. Now we're making these unbelievably good barbecue chicken drumsticks. My husband isn't even the biggest drumstick fan in the world, but he is in love with these. So to begin, we're starting out with a dry rub. In this little bowl, I added a fourth a cup of brown sugar, a tablespoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of salt and pepper, half a tablespoon of garlic powder and onion powder, a half a teaspoon of mustard powder, and then a little dash of cayenne. Of course, if you want it to be a little bit more spicy, just add more more cayenne in and give this a really good stir. After I added my six drumsticks to the bottom of my slow cooker, I'm sprinkling the dry rub all over the top, and then you're going to rub it in with your hands. This is going to give the drumsticks so much great flavor. I do also want to mention, if you want to double the amount of drumsticks or half the amount of drumsticks, you certainly can, just depending on your preference. But anyways, now I'm drizzling one cup of barbecue sauce on top. This will cook on low for six hours. After these six hours, these drumsticks or fall apart tender but I brought them over to my sheet pan and you're going to just lay them on the sheet pan and then drizzle more barbecue sauce all over the top and then place these under your broiler for about two minutes in the oven this is going to make the barbecue sauce on top almost like a glaze Here's my plate of food. I served my chicken drumsticks with mashed potatoes on the side. Like I said previously, these drumsticks are unbelievably good. The flavor is outstanding and they are just so fall apart tender. And if yours aren't quite this tender at the six hour mark of slow cooking, just let them slow cook for an additional hour and they'll get to this point. Now I have to show you this extremely easy Philly cheesesteak recipe. So to my slow cooker, I'm adding my one pound of this beef bottom round steak. I bought it from my butcher like this, or you could use thinly sliced sirloin flank or flat iron steak. Anyways, after I added that steak into my slow cooker, I added a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, tablespoon of steak seasoning. You could use any type of steak seasoning you like three-fourths cup of beef broth, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then I gave this a really good stir, and this is going to cook on low for about five hours. 
Once my five hours is almost up for my steak, I'm going to slice one green bell pepper into smaller pieces along with six ounces of white mushrooms. So here is my steak after those five hours of slow cooking. I'm adding the mushrooms and bell pepper in. I'm going to give it a really good stir and I'm going to let this continue to slow cook on low for about 30 minutes to one hour or until the mushrooms and the bell pepper are soft. Now that I have my steak cooked and my bell peppers and mushrooms are to the softness that I like them to be, I'm going to be placing this mixture into larger sandwich buns and then I'm going to be placing a couple slices of provolone cheese on top of that and then I'm going to put this under my broiler for about a minute or two or until the cheese is to the meltiness that I like it to be. Here's my Philly cheesesteak sandwich. I served it with some of that gravy that the steak was cooking in just to dip the sandwich in, but this was so good. If you want a simple Philly cheesesteak recipe, this one is for you. Now we're making seasoned vegetables and chicken to get this one started. I have about nine smaller sized red potatoes. I'm going to dice them into smaller pieces. To begin on the marinade sauce in this little bowl, I'm going to be adding the juice from one fresh lemon. I do suggest you using fresh lemon juice, not the lemon juice that's like in the container, just because that might give it kind of a weird taste in the end. So try to use fresh lemon juice. Next, I added two tablespoons of minced garlic, a fourth a cup of olive oil, a teaspoon of dried oregano, a half a teaspoon of salt, fourth a teaspoon of pepper, and then a half a teaspoon of onion powder. You are just going to mix this mixture all together. Over to my slow cooker, I'm adding my two large chicken breasts right in there. I do wanna let you know, I have all of the slow cookers I'm using in today's video linked in my description box below. So just to let you know, but now I'm adding my fine frozen green beans. There are 12 ounces of those to one side of my chicken, or you could use fresh green beans, but I do not suggest you using the canned green beans. They'll just become mushy in the end. On the other side of the chicken, I added the diced potatoes, and now I'm sprinkling the marinade all over the top. This will cook on low for about five to six hours, or until your chicken reaches 165 degrees internally. This is the finished product. That chicken is so flavorful, and the vegetables are nice and tender. This recipe is just too easy to throw together. Beef tips are definitely a comfort food type of food for me. So to my slow cooker, I'm adding one pound of stew meat and then you'll be adding four sliced pepperoncini peppers right on top of that. I sliced one smaller sized onion, so now I'm adding that onion in. Next, you'll be adding one cup of beef broth along with one bay leaf. That little bay leaf will give it so much great flavor, you gotta trust me. Next, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. To give it extra flavor and seasoning, go ahead and add in a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, and thyme. Give this a really good stir and then cook it on low for about six to seven hours. About 30 to 40 minutes before my beef tips are finished cooking, I'm going to be making a cornstarch slurry just to thicken the gravy up. So to two tablespoons of water, I added two tablespoons of cornstarch and now I'm just mixing it all together. So over to my slow cooker, I'm removing the bay leaf because nobody wants to eat the bay leaf. And then I added the cornstarch slurry in. You're going to mix this all together and then you are going to let this slow cook for about 30 to 40 minutes on high until the gravy starts to thicken and your beef tips are cooked. I really want to show you how I've been making mashed potatoes. They are just so simple to make like this. So I love doing them in my instant pot. I just add about four medium sized russet potatoes that I peel and dice. I place them on my Trevit in the instant pot with one cup of water on top. I place the lid on, set it to ceiling and cook this on high pressure for 12 minutes with a four minute natural release. And then 
then after they are finished cooking, I remove any of the liquid in the Instant Pot, then add three tablespoons of butter with about a half a cup of milk. I kind of eyeball it, and then I just mash them up, and there you go. This is the easiest way to make mashed potatoes, in my opinion. Here's the finished product. Of course, I poured plenty of the gravy from the beef tips all over the mashed potatoes and then put the beef tips on top. This is such a great comfort food that my family loves. Now we're making this honey garlic chicken. So to begin, we're going to be working on the sauce. In this little bowl, I'm adding a tablespoon of minced garlic and a tablespoon of minced ginger. Next, I added 3 fourths cup of chicken broth, a fourth a cup of low sodium soy sauce, three tablespoons of honey, a fourth a cup of hoisin sauce, and then a dash of crushed red pepper and a teaspoon of rice vinegar. Whisk this all together. Over to my slow cooker, I'm going to be adding two large chicken breasts right in there. Of course, use more or less chicken depending on your preference. On the chicken, you'll be adding one diced up white onion along with the sauce that we made up. Cook this on low for about six hours or until your chicken's completely cooked. I love serving this over rice, so I'm going to be showing you one of the ways that I love cooking rice in my Instant Pot. So I sprayed my Instant Pot with nonstick spray and then I added two cups of rinsed jasmine rice with two cups of water, put the lid on top, set your valve to sealing, and then all I do is press the rice button, I let it cook, and then I always let it do a natural release for about five minutes and then here's your finished product you have the most simple delicious rice in the world now that my chicken is cooked you are going to remove your two chicken breasts to a separate plate and then you are going to shred them up you see how tender the chicken is it kind of just falls apart again I'm just using my meat masher to shred it but you could use two forks over to my saucepan on the stove, I'm adding the honey garlic sauce that the chicken was cooking in. I brought that sauce up to a simmer and then I added a cornstarch slurry, which was just a tablespoon of cornstarch and a tablespoon of water. I let that get thick. Once it was thicker and simmering, I added our shredded chicken. Stir this to combine and once it is all well combined, it is ready to serve. Here's my big plate of food. I served my chicken over a bed of the Instant Pot white rice and I sprinkled the top with plenty of sesame seeds and green onions. If you've never tried something like this, I definitely recommend it. I hope you found a slow cooker recipe that you might be able to make for yourself. And as always, if you're new here, I'd love to have you. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.